Your brain is a powerful thing and it is amazingly sensitive to suggestion. If you label yourself a bad putter and heap a bunch of negative self-talk on by the bucketful, you're going to be exactly what you call yourself. Hey, Michael Leonard here from Wicked Smart Golf where I'm helping you play better without changing your swing. Now one of the five pillars of playing better without swing changes is mastering your putting. Now there are a lot of ways to putt, but one of my favorite books in today's book review that we're gonna cover is called Unconscious Putting by Dave Stockton. Now, Dave is the winner of five major championships, two PGAs, the 1996 Open, and two senior player championships, 11 tournaments on the tour, and 14 titles on the Champions Tour. So this guy obviously knows what he is talking about. What I love about this book is that it has very, very little to do with technique and more about how to use your mind and tap into your subconscious to really get into the zone. So again, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for being here. I do my best to try and take these books and give you at least three to seven points so that way even if you don't have time to read or listen to them, you can still benefit and your game can benefit without trying to spend hours and hours on the range. So let's go over my five biggest lessons from unconscious putting. Lesson number one is to stop being so cautious on the greens. So I love this quote, he says, the unfortunate reality is that this is how most people putt, as if they're getting tailed by somebody about to give them a ticket. They play nervously trying to replicate a stroke rather than make a stroke. So if you're like most golfers, chances are you know exactly what that's like. When you're up on the green, you might have hit a great drive, a great approach shot, then all of a sudden you get on the green, you tense up. Now it's a lot easier to tense up on the green because all of a sudden your hard work on that hole is now being put to the test. And you never wanna feel like you wasted a shot or a couple of good shots by missing a putt. So that's the first thing and something that I just could not agree with more is quit playing cautiously when you're on the greens. Now that doesn't mean you need to hit every putt three to four feet by so you can say you got it there, but at the end of the day, if you're up there and you're trying to act like a robot and you're very mechanical and cautious and timid and scared, that is going to reflect negatively in your putting stroke. So again, it's just golf. It's not the end of the world. Most of the people that are watching this are not trying to make golf their occupation. So quit making it life or death. Have some fun out there and act like you did when you were a kid. Think about kids when they're on the putting green. They're out there, they see the hole, they putt to it. They are not worried about missing it or rolling it six feet by. They just get up there, they see it, and they putt to it. Have that type of mentality and get rid of caution on the greens. Second lesson from this book that I absolutely love is to quit focusing on mechanics. Dave really talks about in the book the importance of keeping putting simple. All you need is the speed and the line. That is it. One of the best ways he recommends to stop thinking so mechanically is to just speed up your putting routine. Now, if you watch a lot of amateur golfers or higher handicappers, it's easy to see them take a long time on the green and conversely, usually leads to a stroke that isn't nearly as consistent or effective as somebody that is a really consistent golfer. Now, now I think this happens because you kind of are up there, you want to do well, right? There's all of a sudden an objective, you can finally see the cup, and you want to obviously make every putt, and that leads to trying to get cute and trying steering it in and guiding it in, when in reality, you should not be up there thinking, okay, I just need to shut the putter face, or I need to close this, or I need to take it back a little bit straighter. It's really easy to get into mechanics in all parts of golf, but specifically with putting. One of the biggest things that I recommend is to just get up there and leave all the mechanics for the putting green or your indoor putting green at home. This is not the time to be worried about your grip and your stroke and are you accelerating your decels, your head sank down. Try and remove as much mechanics as you can and focus on one thing, getting the ball in the hole. Now what Dave talks about in the book is finding a spot two inches in front of your line. So for example, if you have an eight foot putt, you think it's a right edge putt, you want to find a spot about two inches in front of the ball that's going to line up with that apex. And then from there, during your pre-shot routine, which should be quick and efficient, 
focus on the ball rolling over that spot. Based on your green rating, if the ball rolls over that spot, it should end up in the hole. And this way, you're focused on line and speed and not mechanics. The third lesson from unconscious putting is all about keeping green reading simple. Now, I really like Dave's approach. Inside the book, he talks about really trying to only read the putt from behind the hole and from the low side. Now he says that sometimes if he can't really figure out the putt or if it's really long or if it's a double breaker, he will go on the other side and read the putt from there. But for the most part, he says to read the putt from back behind your ball. And I couldn't agree more with that. That's something that I try and do. I find that when I read the putt from all angles, sometimes it's easy to get overwhelmed. And so what I try and do and recommend that you try and do as well with green reading is read it from behind. Obviously you want to crouch down. You want to try and see the line, get level with it. From there, hopefully you can see if it's going left or right. And then you can even walk to the side of it. Uh, Jordan Spieth always recommends walking to the low side. A lot of other putting coaches and elite players do as well. That way you can kind of get a better feel for the putt and the break. But I think for most players, you probably don't need to read the putt from behind the ball and from behind the cup. Not only will it confuse you, it's gonna slow down play sometimes. So I use that as a last resort. So if I read the putt from behind or from the low side and I still don't really know what it's gonna do, I'm looking at my yardage book and I'm like, what is happening? Then I will go down from uh, behind the cup and take a look at it. But again, that's kind of a last resort. Plus it is gonna slow down your putting routine, which might make you get a little bit more mechanical and just kind of slow down pace of play. Number four from unconscious putting is to tap into the power of visualization. Now obviously with a title like unconscious putting, you have to assume that Dave is very much uh, talking about the importance of visualization and how to use your subconscious to get your best performance, specifically on the greens. Now he says one of his biggest factors of why he loved this was after reading the book Psycho Cybernetics. Here's how he described it in the books. Maltz, the author, was a plastic surgeon who wanted to figure out why some of his patients weren't satisfied with the results of surgery, even when the surgery could be defined as a success in every sense of the word. They looked better, but they didn't feel better. His theory was that patients, or anybody else trying to improve at something, including golf, sabotage themselves with negative self-talk. This book has been personally one of my favorite in my own personal development journey and gives you so much more insights on how to visualize and how your brain actually wants to help you succeed if you learn how to use it properly. So make sure to take a look at that. All right, the final tip here from Unconscious Putting is simple. Create a highlight reel of some of your best putts. Anytime you can, try and get some putts that are going down, whether you're in practice or have someone filming you when you're on the course, and when things aren't going well, watch that. Just like players probably YouTube themselves for their best putts, this is a great way to remind your mind that you're a great putter and that you can bounce back. I think this is a great putting book because it doesn't focus on mechanics. Now, in my own game, I recently went through something similar where despite endless amounts of practice, nothing seemed to work. And that to me is one of the most frustrating things as a player. In fact, I was having one of my best ball striking seasons in 2021 and I could not get the ball in the hole. It wasn't until I actually found out how to go unconscious through a system called the look and shoot putting method. Now, if you've listened to Wicked Smart Golf podcast, you've probably listened to one of my guest interviews with Cameron Strachan, the creator of that. There's a little bit more information down in the description below, and I have some other videos that are coming up on the channel, but the look and shoot putting method to me is the easiest and fastest way to become a highly confident putter. I believe that the look and shoot putting method is the best method to master your putting on the greens. It's such a simple system and when you learn it, you'll think, why didn't I do this the whole time? But it really can have a huge impact on your game and your confidence. In less than a year of using this system, I dropped an average of four shots per round, going from 33.5 putts to 29.5 per round. The best part though, is that I practiced about 70% less. So again, I know it sounds a little bit too good to be true. I'm not into hypes or gimmicks, and I'm only giving you guys the best stuff that I fully believe in on this channel. Now, the look and shoot putting method is one of those. So if you wanna learn how to go unconscious, I highly recommend this book, and then take a look at the look and shoot putting method down below, or listen to the full interview on Wicked Smart Golf with the creator of that system, Cameron Strachan. 
All right, well, hopefully you guys enjoyed that book review. Again, even if you don't have time to read or listen to these books, use some of this knowledge from the great to apply to your own game so you can become a wicked smart golfer. Just remember, you don't need to spend more time on the range hitting seven irons and hitting drivers without a target to get better. A lot of times you need to work on the small things, especially putting and short game, paired with a strong mental game to play your best golf. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I hope you have an epic day on the links.